All right. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Thank you guys for joining Caribbean American Passport. Um, we are pleased to share with um, our audience about the upcoming seminar. Um, Wesley, thank you for, uh, you're still president of the, the chamber, right? Yes, the I Gans am. American Chamber of Commerce? Yes, I am. All right. So tell us a little bit about the chamber before we introduce Dr. Blackman. Tell us a little bit about why, uh, what, what's the importance of this chamber and why people should, should get to know what you guys are doing? Well, Jeanette, you should know better than anyone else the importance of a chamber uh, or of chambers in general, uh, in general, because you are part of a chamber yourself. Um, and uh, of course, you've worked very closely over the years with the, with the Guyanese American Chamber of Commerce on different, different events. Um, you know, it is important that the business community, particularly business communities uh, that represent uh, diaspora populations or that are, you know, uh, part of diaspora populations, um, be existent so as to promote and protect the interests of that uh, business community, um, wherever it might be, in the case in the United States, in the various states. And um, I think in the case of the Guyanese American Chamber, it is particularly important as more and more Guyanese uh, seek to open uh, business enterprises across the United States, and also as um, companies in Guyana seek to access um, the US market mm -hmm. for uh, goods and services. And I can give you one simple example of how this chamber has been effective. And I think it's the most perhaps striking example I can give. Um, some years ago, a Guyanese business woman um, in Georgia, imported some Hassa from Guyana. It came up on La Park and Airways, and when it arrived, um, it was seized mm -hmm. by the Florida Fish and Wildlife uh, Agency here in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, the lady went her merry way along, back to, 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 to Georgia, having lost a shipment simply because uh, the Fish and Wildlife Agency here um, in Florida misunderstood uh, exactly what was provided for in terms of ASA imports um, under what at the time was the Caribbean Basin Initiative, which is now the Caribbean Basin Economic Recovery Act. So the, she lost her, and, and I think there was a misunderstanding too, because they didn't also recognize until some period after they had seized the, the Hassa that it was not actually um, uh, sourced from within Florida. Um, because there are some laws about, uh, you know, the protection of of of, of Hassa by a different um, uh, name uh, here in 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 uh, in Florida. So to make a long story short, she lost the shipment. She went to Georgia, and about two years later, she jumped a red light apparently in mm -hmm. Georgia. And when they ran her her um, her plates and her name and so on, she, it was found that she was on the wanted list in Florida. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so she was referred to the chamber and we had to, to fight um, at various levels, at the federal level and at the state level to get all of this sorted out. Um, because it was already a court matter, she had to appear in court, but once she appeared, it was dismissed. So mm -hmm. that is one striking example wow. of, um, you know, of how the chamber can be of help yeah, yeah, um, yeah. to its members. Another quick one, someone imported uh, mosquito coils from Guyana, 
-hmm. which was cleared by all the agencies that are responsible for clearing stuff with, with you know trade uh, imports into the US. But this one did not have and did not really require the approval of the US Environment, Environmental Protection Agency. So a very popular um, uh, Caribbean food establishment in Orlando, which you would know, um, mm -hmm. uh, know of um, Gannett, mm -hmm. had nine boxes of the mosquito coils on their shelves, mm -hmm. on, on, on its shelves, when the EPA went in and looked at it and said mm -hmm. there was some ingredient in the mosquito coils that was not in keeping with the requirements for imports into the United States. Okay. Not only did they seize the nine boxes, but they charged the entity with nine conks. And each conk carried a fine of 9,000 US dollars, which would have wow. it to $1,000. Again, the, 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 um, the chamber got involved mm -hmm. with the EPA and other agencies. And, um, you know, we had it resolved where, again, because it was already charged, the uh, nine conks, they brought the nine conks to down to one conk. Okay. And then suspended the, the payment of the fine. So, um, that's a big yeah. win talking about cheaper <laughs> benefits. That's a big one. <laughs> right. So, I mean, and, and, and perhaps we don't really, you know, sing these, um, these, these praises very publicly because, mm -hmm. again, we, 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 we try to tell people and, and, and our members. That look, you've got to conform with the law, mm -hmm. and if you conform with the law, there's no, there's no, you know, there's no difficulty. We are there for you, but if you break the law, I mean, we really can't bat for you, you know, yes. um, and 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 yes. you know, so. Uh, but I, but I am aware, for, as, as, you know to, as, as you would know too, in 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 um in in, in when it comes to these um Guyanese mm -hmm. bars. There's this old question about the two o'clock cut off. Oh Whether you supposed to do stop you know coming? I am actually dealing with that this very week, calling yeah. zoning and and asking questions so I can actually help to guide some of our members very precisely and correctly on well, that know, same matter. You know, those days back then, and um we had Guyanese in the Orange County um sheriff's office mm -hmm. at very senior levels. And so we were able to, to, to talk to them and so on and to have them explain mm -hmm. to some of these bar owners that what the law really is. Yes. You know, because some of them get mixed up. They feel they can, once they stop Sparking. something at two o'clock, people can stay and drink yes. as long as they that. Doesn't apply in some cases, is that you must stop serving and consuming mm -hmm. at two o'clock. And so on. That, so, you know, that's, such a, that's such one that's. As I said, only only yesterday, that was exactly what I was dealing with for a new business owner right here. Yes. Um, <laughs> thank you, Wesley. You know, we'll come back to you. But uh, <laughs> Dr. Blackman, tell us a little bit about this guy and his business journal that you've done. Right. And I know you're um, pushing again. It's 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 pretty much the same mission, um, but in a different way. And I'm happy to see you guys come together to push this together. But tell us a bit about the Guyanese Business Journal that you're doing. Yeah, uh, well, thank you, Gannett. And uh, thank you, Wesley. It's, it's good to be a part of the conversation. Uh, so so the so the Business Journal started up a couple of years ago. You know, uh, I think, you know, early, around the time of the, around the time of the election and first oil, to sort of where we started, you know, we really thought that there was kind of a need for something independent, something apolitical, something rational, that would have some kind of objective discussions about Guyana, the oil resources, the revenues, you know, and to think through clearly about how we could do this to better the lot of a large number of people. And so it's in that sense, the journal was born. We started we we initially had in mind a magazine, and then we started off as a blog, and we would sort of publish things, uh, you know, as we saw fit on various areas, uh, in various areas. And then, around about last year, uh, we became a, a we found our voice, so to speak, as a webinar. 
So the idea was that we we wanted to we said you know we would invite people who were sort of thoughtful and who could kind of really give some firm understanding of the conversation sort of around Guyana, around the diaspora, ways in which people could be involved and sort of be independent in a, in, in this sense. And, and, and it's sort of found its voice, it's found the life of its own. And, you know, really we've sort of structured around some very basic principles, you know, the, 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 the energy resources uh-huh. have, have, been uncovered after many, many years of failed exploration. And so we were lucky. And so to really say to people, look, you're lucky and 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 don't kind of you know look a gift horse in the mouth. It's 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 something that we often don't we take for granted that you know it's being you know a couple of thousand feet below sea level and then you get to the bottom of the Atlantic and then you go some more you know, mm-hmm. these things just don't happen. It's just yes. by a great fortune that 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 we are in this position. And 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 so we should be mindful of it and we should be very thoughtful about how we go forward with it. And then the other thing that sort of linked to the chamber was, you know, as 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 we were thinking through, we sort of realized that one of the things you really have to do is you have to catalyze small business formation. And so we had to be, you know, focusing. So we, we decided to make that kind of one of the principles to sort of focus on thinking about how to catalyze businesses within the broad communities of Guyana so that, you know, we, the only way to access this really was, was through some sort of economic vehicles and to really sensitize people to the notion of, 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 of businesses. And then the sort of broader conversation about, you know, channeling the resources effectively into you know, education, pub- public services, infrastructure, health, and so on. And, and and the feeling was that, in a way, that that conversation kind of really, you know, that forward-looking conversation, not backward-looking. We, we're often yeah. trapped in a kind of backward-looking conversation, but conversations, let's look forward and see what it is that is there for us to do forward. And we felt like that was a part, that was a conversation that we wanted to have you know, across class, across race, that was inclusive of all of the people who had across geographic boundaries. So insisting that 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 the people who were part of the diaspora, be they in New York or Florida or Toronto or London or wherever they find themselves could be a part of that and ought to be a part of that conversation. Mm-hmm. So, so that's kind of the broad genesis. And, yeah. you know, and we, I am I am actually so happy that you guys are doing that because I know, you know, Wesley gets yelled at, told off at times but he keeps pushing forward and and same the diaspora needs to understand um how important uh the things that are happening at home are um how if they if as you said regardless of class race um uh politics and all of that they they should be looking at those resources and 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 wondering how they could actually utilize okay. you know what they what they might have as talent here what they have as resources back home because a lot of them have resources back home that they're not using so uh before we even move forward i want to commend you guys for keeping the momentum moving forward in terms of educating our people, whether they value it or not, or understand the value or not. All right. I just wanted to pause and say that um, and, and to keep up that good work because it's, it, you know, when it comes to diasporas, there's no president, there's no, you know, it's just the people who step up and say, all right, I take responsibility for keeping our diaspora informed and educated. So again, thanks about uh, Thanks. Thanks for that. So tell, Tell us about why this conference, um, guys, is is another important step in that direction. Well, well go ahead, Wesley. From the chamber's point of view, you would know, Gannett, you um, actively participated in an event last year where we had the prime minister and a delegation of ministers. Yes, very, so very educational. Um, mm-hmm. And, okay. um, you know, the chambers, one of its mission, uh, one of its missions, um, is to inform the Guyanese diaspora and friends mm-hmm. of Guyana, in the in this case in the U.S., about what is happening in Guyana from different perspectives. So we've had the government. Um, prior to the government, we'd had um, some members of the opposition. Uh, 
uh, talking about issues related to business and economic development. Mm -hmm. Because irrespective of um, which political party forms the government, we have to uh, push ahead with the things that are likely to make the prospect of life tomorrow better than it is today. Yeah. And it is against that backdrop and in that kind of philosophical thinking that the chamber has and will continue to host events like we've done on, and you were part again of the whole question of the Venezuela claim. I think the, the chamber mm -hmm. was one of the, the, the um, organizations that really held um, you know, a number of events Yes, and, uh, and, and allowed folks to understand that in a clear way, especially in guys. Very, in a very clear way. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I must thank the people who, from time to time, like yourself and so on, who have facilitated this, and, and people who come forward to speak that is, you know, the likes yeah. of Carl yeah. Greenwich, um, former Ambassador Holloway, U.S. Ambassador, and, 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 and a host of others. Anyhow, to come back to your, your question more specifically, um, you know, we hear a lot of complaints about the lack of information of what is happening in Ghana with regard to the oil and gas industry. Um, we hear of a lot, a lot of accusatory things um, from various sections of the community mm -hmm. about what is not happening or what is being done wrong and, and that kind of thing. And so we thought it would be a, a good thing to have a forum focused on oil and gas, what it means for Guyana, and what it means for the people of Guyana, and to give those of us in the diaspora an opportunity, one, to be updated uh -huh. on sources that are logical, fair, balanced, and knowledgeable, mm -hmm. and two, to contribute their ideas to a discussion as to how best the resources from oil and gas might be used to ensure that all the people of Guyana um, benefit in a in an equitable way um, yes. from 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 the resources garnered um, from oil and gas. And so, what I am hoping will come out of this was would be um, a, a more educated and informed uh, diaspora community about what is happening, about, you know, the, 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 the plans, future plans for the, for, the, um, for the industry and so on. And of course, some solid, concrete, reasonable, logical um, suggestions as to how best and what might be some of the priorities that um, could be embarked upon mm -hmm. uh, given the resources that we are likely um, to generate over the next decade or two. Um, and that and I'll come back to, I'll come back to some of the, sorry, finish no, up. That would make the country and its people, um, you know, uh, enjoy a better standard of living and a mm -hmm. better quality of life. And before mm -hmm. Dr. Blackman answers the question, I, I actually want to, um, piggyback on what you're saying by telling folks I've attended of course as you said nearly uh, probably about all um, I can tell folks that um, you know jet the jet blue going to Guyana if if they had attended right at that Miramar Cultural Center uh -huh, I remember you sitting with <laughs> with yes. jet blue there's things and that then, you then learn then or sorry Mm -hmm. The first contact with the government of Guyana was with mm -hmm. then Foreign Minister Carl Greenwich at yes. that very forum. At that forum. If you come out, there are little nuggets like that that you could um, know that are coming way before they come. Uh, one of the other things that, that opened up my eyes um, would be the impact of um, the Venezuelan diaspora here now in Florida and their impact politically that we all have to keep an eye on. That came out of um, one of the seminars that you did as well. Um, that, to be frank, that that one was a very powerful one because I see it now. No, but only if you're part of these educational pieces, 
can you see the things that you should see later? And so I just really wanted to give you the credit on that before we even move forward. So Dr. Blackman, on your end, you know, what, what are your thoughts about what these kind of events do for the diaspora? And why? No, well, I, I think, I think uh, you know, Wesley said it perfectly. Uh, you, you know, at, at core, it, there's an educational mission for folks here to really understand what's going on. And and so that ex, that education extends through you know the questions that you just said you know how 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 do people play a role in in the sector what kinds of roles can they play so through workforce development and training uh, thinking through what are the investment opportunities that are there for people who are in the class of people who can be investors uh, you, you know what are the ways in which you know, one can bring technical expertise to bear on some of the discussions around infrastructure. You know, what are the ways in which, you know, people who are here can play a role in, 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 in these questions of governance and transparency and so on, uh, you know, and, and even more specifically to the uh, sector policy. Not, I mean, the point is the stakeholders in Guyana are the stakeholders in Guyana and they're the policymakers and they're the responsible parties, but to provide but at least to put into the mix of possibilities uh, a set of ideas that emerge from people here who and emerge from thoughtful people in with expertise in these areas. Let's say, you know, in addition to all the things that you're considering, here are some things that you could potentially consider. Uh, mm -hmm. I think this is this is this is what I see the function of. And in a sense, you know, I, I, I you know, when I when I as I begin to think about the GBJ more, I begin to think about it as a kind of educational business you know to sort of say part of the business is educating the diaspora in 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 matters that are related to Guyana in some very real way uh you know we we had a we had one of these so we we had one of these uh one of these meetings in Brooklyn and uh one of one of the issues that came up was you know the question of the FPS those and these are the sort of floating and these are huge massive things and then in a kind of throw remark just like you mentioned in sort of nugget the observation was that on an FPSO perhaps you have about 125 150 people working on this really big 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 machine you have less than 200 people mm -hmm. and so you know, when when someone when you're looking at this and thinking, you know, where are the jobs that you're supposed to be, you you have you have to have some understanding that on an FBSO, there, there are only going to be 150 people, and some of these people are going to be geophysicists, and some of these people are going to be technicians, and so how do I get, you know, 50,000 Guyanese employed? Where where are they getting employed in this context? And to begin to have a granular conversation about. What are the opportunities that are really there, and how do you access those opportunities? I think that's part of that's part of the education that we've been trying to do, and I, I think it's in this sense that the partnership with the chamber, who has long been involved in this kind of activity, uh, seemed like a really nice seemed had some synergy, and 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 we were able to kind of connect and and, and affect it. Wonderful, I can and to that um, very quickly, Gennett. Um, when we talk about the benefits for, um, uh, you know, from the oil and gas sector, we need to bear in mind that the benefits um, don't only uh, up impact the oil and gas sector, but the resources that are generated from that from the from that mm -hmm. sector can help develop our other industries, particularly Absolutely. our agro agriculture and agri business industry, mm -hmm. and of course things like infrastructure, healthcare, public safety, and so on. But I want to specifically say something on, on our agribusiness. The pandemic and the consequent, uh, not the consequent, and the, and, and the uh, in, in invasion of, 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 um, uh, of Ukraine by yes. the Russians, um, those events have had significant impact on the supply chain. Yeah. And what we see as a result is that our food security in CARICOM is threatened. Um, particularly those island nations that depend on tourism and that will have to ensure that it has 
um, food to supply to the tourists that come yeah. to, to, to the region. And that is where a country like Ghana becomes um, particularly critical in that by generating resources from the oil and gas industry, we can move beyond just primary products and go to value added, where we can now you know, expand the production, um, particularly because we are going to have um, a cheaper source of energy and more reliable yeah. energy. So there's going to be an increase in manufacturing and food processing and that kind of thing. And so again, that becomes critical because it means that Guyana can play and must play a critical role in the production of food yes. um, for not only for ourselves, but for our Caricom brothers and sisters. And I think investment in agribusiness um, is, is critical and it's critical for people to understand that it is as a result of of oil and gas resources that we are going to be able to expand um, you know our agricultural production and processing mm -hmm. so as have just to utilize the 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 the, the, the crops and so on the, the vegetables and fruits and so on that we have yeah. um, you know we build our, our dairy industry so that we can ensure that the impact of the supply chain, uh, you know, disruptions to the supply chain do not adversely affect us. And that's why I commend CARICOM. And, and not only us, the Caribbean, as you're saying. Are... Well, I say us, the Caribbean. I'm talking uh, true. About okay. My Caribbean mm -hmm. hat here, sorry. Yes. But I think I must I commend Caribbean governments for seemingly being very serious about their commitment to seek to reduce our food import bill by 25% by 2025. Oh, very nice. Um, and, and again, this is from one of the seminars you had where my brother was actually on. And he, he spoke about just looking at the oil and gas industry and understanding that the growth and the wealth comes from serving the people who actually are relocating to that new country, that new area that is that is developing, and them wanting services like better healthcare, um, you know, transportation that's more, um, you know, mm. safer and 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 better quality transportation and housing and you know uh, what is a Starbucks or services that they're familiar with. Those are the things to look at as well, because those are areas of, of growth opportunities. Right, guys? Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, you know, of course, um, you know, we live in a, in a global village and um, people develop tastes and, and of course, and, and recognize certain um, bands of, 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 mm -hmm. of facilities and so on and of services. And that's good. Um, but I think we have got to, um, particularly those of us in the diaspora, have got to seek to encourage our brothers and sisters here that we in the region, in the Caribbean region, can produce many things as good or even better than from ex ex extra outside of the region. And, and so, I agree with so, that. I'm just so saying. While, while the Starbucks... While the Starbucks and the McDonald's and so on are are, are, are not excluded and are not prevented mm -hmm. from 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 coming, I think we cannot es you know escape the importance of the of the banks, the IH, OMG, absolutely, and, and, the, and we've got to encourage people. Yeah, absolutely. My 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 thing is that just for for those out there to understand, don't just think because you're not necessarily oil and gas, you can't yeah. benefit from what's coming in terms of growth and development. Yeah. Oh no, there are a lot of there are a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think that's something for to 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 really emphasize for folks. You know, the the, the point is that uh you know with less than a million people, you know, Guyana does not have the sort of variety of suppliers and the labor force uh that is necessary to meet all of the demands of this industry. And so 
it, it, it's clear that uh, you know we 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 need more people to be thinking about not just the narrow technical areas, but accountants, lawyers, yeah. uh, you know, people who deal with you know creating access to capital. Uh, you know, there there are a whole series of things that that go beyond the narrow business of the extraction of oil from the seafloor. Uh, that, that are part of this sort of value chain of the oil and gas sector, that a large number of people here have the sort of expertise that is necessary to play a meaningful role in in in, in the various sectors in Guyana, and and it and it is a needed uh, uh, it, it is a needed uh, thing. It's not something that is, mm-hmm. yeah. And 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 really, and, and one 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 other thing I would say, you know, is is in a sense. Part of the discussion too has to, you know, has to has to go to, and 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 this is always a bit tricky, but it has to go to getting uh, Guyanese in Guyana to to you know in a, in, a, in a in a way embrace their you know embrace broadly foreigners and and the competencies that they have, because these are things that are going to be critical for facilitating. The, the the entrepreneurial activities that will unlock the full potential of the thing right uh you 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 can't i mean when you when you when you think about sort of a place like uh, uh like a silicon valley or when you think about a place like einstein alley or you think about the biotech sectors in massachusetts you 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 understand clearly the importance of having lots of people with lots of ideas uh in the mix and so the the part of i suppose Part of the education too has to sort of go to helping our brothers and sisters at home sort of understand what's the sort of platform on which you can build this kind of innovative dynamic economy, and what are the, some of the ingredients and how to sort of in a nuanced way capture these ingredients that are necessary for creating the circumstances conducive to the dynamism in an economic sense that is needed. Uh, but 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 you're absolutely right. This is uh, this is a you know this is not something that is limited to um, you know the shore base right yeah. this is something that is much broader that extends across the entire society real estate education mm-hmm. uh, you know retail you a, know raising a lot of folks aren't, aren't as aware selling. of of how much um, you know rent let's let's see is in Ghana that that some people yes. are able to make if but, if it, Housing, etc. The housing market is definitely one that yes. folks should be paying attention yes. to. Yes, um, and so these are things that we hope people ought to be paying attention to, and 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 bringing some of the expertise. You know, we we know that we have, you know, people here who are operating Airbnbs and so on, and have that kind of expertise, and and have the sort of capital that these are people who can play a meaningful role in this context, and and it would certainly be something that is of value uh, to Guyanese in Guyana and Guyanese here, part of the diaspora. To have more Guyanese participating in an entrepreneurial sense in 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 the Guyanese economy. And let me ask a question then, Wesley and and Dr. Blackman. Do you guys feel like Guyanese are hearing the message enough? Um, are, are they still focused on on politics as a barrier, or um, you know whatever else it is 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 in front of them as a? I I, I see at this point almost like a made up barrier because I, I I've been making the argument to people that when we came out to America we didn't know what we were coming to, and we came, but a lot of people are finding it hard to go home when this is one of the fastest growing economies. And they've got land back home. They've got, you know, you're going to something that is a lot more known than, than what you're yes. coming out to. And yeah. yet still we have folks who are yeah. afraid. No, but and Gin and I would take it even in a slightly different way. I mean, to the to a certain extent, you know, in order to be in order to engage in this sort of new global environment that we're in, you don't you don't have to move home. Right. So so you don't have to pick up your your kids and your family and go home. 
I mean, you know, the people who are there, who are who are part of the 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 who are engaged in in the extraction of the oil resources. I mean, they're they're not going to move to Guyana permanent. Some of them will, um, you know, over time, but many of them will come back to Houston. Will come back to yeah. the various parts of the United States that they live. So, I, I think you know, Guyanese Americans don't have to don't have to go home. They can avail have to be an all or nothing. Kind nothing. Of yes. I mean, so you know, I think we we, we kind of get caught in that. But what's key is is the expertise and the experience, the networks that you've built up. I mean, you know, I know some some folks who've been in the Silicon Valley area. I mean, the kind of networks that they have. I mean, if they can avail sort of young Guyanese at the University of Guyana of that sort of network, if they can create institutions that can help some knowledge transfer that they have in that context then, and and do business too. They don't have to move from San Francisco or you don't have to move from Florida. I mean, in Florida, part of the business, hospitality business. Well, you can train young people how to be engaged in that hospitality and, business. And the president of Ghana has been making that clear. Um, and, and even the um, event Wesley did, the, the, the chamber did, uh, you know, the ministers really made that very clear. They said, investors are coming from all over the world. We're asking across the world. To honestly pay attention to, to, to and, and that's and that's the thing I think that yeah. you know and that's the point I'm making whether whether we like it or not uh, just simply because of the economic potential economic value people from across the entire world will go to Guyana. There's no question about it. They, it's mm-hmm. already happened. I think I saw Star, some. Yes, they were going where, even, even during where, COVID, you know. Yes, where this was the, <laughs> this last year or something, was, it, was it the largest year of arrivals, you know, a couple of million arrivals or something like this. I mean, the people will go to Guyana simply because that is where it is. I think there's an opportunity for people who are Guyanese by birth, who know Guyana, who still have links to Guyana, who, even though they are perhaps now citizens of America or citizens of, you know, the UK or someplace, they have an expertise that can be useful to help to see Guyana develop. And if Guyana develops, they will they will benefit from it. And and Guyana needs the capacity that they have in order to develop effectively. And so I think it's a win-win situation for everyone. It's just that, you know, maybe as you said, we we have to, you know, remove ourselves from the political environment and focus more on the on the economic environment and the people empowerment environment. And I think once we begin to move in that direction, I think we we will see some some more rapid positive changes. And I might add that it that it is possible that as you know, we work in the economic sphere, that this can then kind of help to mitigate some of the sharpness of the political sphere. But that's a that's an entirely different argument. But but it's quite possible. Wesley, your thoughts? Well, I think um, Gannett, first of all, I think I can I can cite myself as a good example. I was gonna say give <laughs> first as as first hand experience. Yeah, I spend a lot of time in Guyana, but I still live in in in, in yeah, the- yeah. And so far, you know, I've found it not um, inconvenient to to operate in 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 such a way. And I th- think that um, more Guyanese um, need to, you know, go home and explore. Not necessarily, you know, move their lock, stock, and barrel, mm-hmm. but look at the opportunities and see how best they might be able to to do some things in Guyana. You know, a couple of years, not years, a couple of decades ago, there was this all this talk about globalization and outsourcing and so on and so forth. And now there seems to be a little reversal of that and and, and it becomes now near sourcing, um, <laughs> either doing things at home or nearby. Mm-hmm. And I think um, with the kind of land we have in Ghana, the kind of resources we have, um, you know, the, the, the prospect of cheap electricity, um, of uh, uh, trainable lab- labor force. I mean, we still need, we'll need people, um, but I think, um, you know, particularly for small enterprises, um, you can access some available labor that may not be trained for what you want to do, but they are trainable. 
Okay. You know, and that would stick with you if you really treat them right. You know, okay. we've got to make sure that we treat people, people right. People, um, you know, are the main ingredient in the success of any undertaking. And so um, I think if you treat people right, um, you treat them with respect, um, uh, and especially Guyanese, I think mm -hmm. you, can get, you can get the best out of them. I, I want to touch briefly on your question about the message, though, if they're getting, if we're getting the message. Yes. I think we are getting mixed messages. Okay, and explain that, that one. <laughs> and that is, and that is unfortunate. We're getting mixed messages. Um, and, you know, uh, I think that sometimes confuses, um, you know. You mean sometimes. like, okay, some, some folks are, are, of course, saying come back and then others are saying break down the mixed messages because, you know, I, I could infer well, what I want. Some out of people that like message. me mm -hmm. see a, a, a future, mm -hmm. um, Diana that really can be prosperous as a nation and prosperous for its people. Yes. There are some who will insist that it is a failed state and will remain a failed state. And, uh, and that's really the message. Well, then we're, we're on the same page there because my thing has been, I've been passionate recently about telling everyone that I know in my circle, listen, pay attention because your children will almost knock you upside <laughs> your head later about failing to miss this opportunity right in your own backyard because of whatever you perceive as a problem when how big of a problem is it really go back for yourself and figure it out you know right right and then of course you know there are those um uh so-called experts you know that speak on every topic mm -hmm. um and particularly oil and gas you know um, a lot of what some people say are not necessarily accurate. I don't think some people understand the whole issue of investment. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, uh, when I used to live in Washington, D.C., um, on M Street in Washington, D.C., between 14th Street and 21st Street, you had about 90 countries with investment promotion offices yeah. along that street. And all of them offered incentives for investment, tax holidays, duty-free mm -hmm. concessions, and so on. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's the nature of investment promotion. You know, you've got to give people incentives to come. Mm -hmm. I mean, you may have the best beaches in the world and so on, but still you've got to give people incentives to come and put hotels. You know, I mean, they're not going to just turn up. They want a certain security. Um, they're not in the business of charity. They're there to make money. Um, what you've got to do is to structure your business in such a way to ensure that your people do and, your, and the country earns as well. Um, in the case of oil and gas, uh, I don't think we could have done it ourselves. Um, yeah. <laughs> we needed investment mm -hmm. and that investment has come do we have a perfect arrangements some people feel no um, some people are willing to live with what is there yeah um, in, 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 in my case my view is that you you know when you sign a contract you sign a contract and um, if you can um get some mutually agreed amendments to those to that contract you know but you don't arbitrarily you know um uh, impose new conditions in a contract yeah. um you know and in Guyana's case i hope the future contracts um now that we've had some exposure and experience um you know would be uh a little more beneficial um mm -hmm. Uh, to the country and so on. But, you know, look, um, Guyana's had a history of nationalization. We nationalized yeah. foreign companies in the past. Um, we have a claim to five-eighths of our country and, um, and our maritime space. Mm -hmm. 
from a neighbor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all these are uh, uh, issues that investors look at. Um, you know, when they when they when, uh, when they analyze whether or not to invest. And so I think that we, you know, in some cases, we have been a little reckless, if I can call it that. Some 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 commentators and so on have been a little reckless in their in their in their comments. Um, you know about uh, about about the 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 uh, oil and gas industry in yeah. Ghana. Yeah. Um, I think it is good to note that oil and gas is being developed in Ghana, not at the expense of, but alongside development of renewable resources. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, um, and 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 that is good. That is the way. Um, now. Some people feel that perhaps Ghana is moving too fast, but look, um, uh, if not now, when? Absolutely, <laughs> our, our time is now. You know, our time is now. Yeah. Um, developed countries had their time when they yeah. developed the resources at their disposal. And I think, you know, we must develop ours responsibly um you know uh in an environmentally um sound way and so on um but to those who feel that we sh perhaps should not pursue the development of oil and gas i think that's uh that's really a flawed, flawed oh, that that flawed, i i, flawed I agree with you on that and i mean even the broader argument about the contracts and all of that i those are some of the issues that Guyanese are getting caught up. And I say almost entangled in these weeds and making those arguments and other arguments be the, the like the source of, of all of their time instead of focusing on the fact that there is money to be made here. It is your country. You have access to a lot of things that, you know, not necessarily um, are going to bar you politically wise from earning money or, or, or so. And it's time to just pay attention and earn some darn money in your country. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I am so. No, no, you know, like it, over... you, I think I think you said it perfectly. Uh, <laughs> I, I wish I could say I could have said it with, with much clarity, but I was you know because I I argue with people all the time. People yeah. who have left their rice fields, their their family rice fields. People who are not paying attention to their parents' properties that they have, and I'm saying you're actively losing money because you're actively losing a, a rental of almost two thousand dollars a month now on a low end. You're you're slaving away in a job here and not paying attention to resources that can make yeah, you money yeah. based on yeah, the that, arguments that, that, that are in the weeds in my opinion no, you, you, you've, you know, you've made that with absolute clarity I was I was I mean I was reflecting as you were talking I, I'd written this article uh there's a guy who has a who who puts out a book it's called like oil oil dorado and so I'd written a chapter in the book and one of the chapter was about kind of an idea for ensuring generational equity. But the point of it was the point that you just made, which was to say, you know, what will the future generations say of us today? Mm -hmm. I mean, what will our grandchildren, when they, when they, you know, sit and they read the paper, they will say their parents, their grandparents did A, B, did, how did they manage this moment that they're, that they're in? And, you know, to the point that you just made, there was a recent study by Reistad. And, you know, to look, Diana's first commercial discovery is 2015, right? This is now seven years later, 2022. And I think that the Reistad people estimated that, you know, they estimated that, 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 you know, by 2040, cumulatively, sort of just adding up the dollar amounts by 2040, the take for Ghana with the current contract. I mean, and so that's that's the thing that I think people get caught up in, just as you, the take for Ghana with the current contract, and these were the estimates by the Reichstead Group, was about 157 billion dollars. That's a that's a tremendous amount of money. I mean, that's a starting place for if yeah. if anyone. Sir sort of said, this is the starting place that I give you in 1988. Everyone would take that. 
And it, it's not to say that there shouldn't be an argument, but to say here we're, we're at the starting place, and now let's think about what that starting, what sort of platform we can we can do with that starting place. And you know, as you put it, people whose parents' houses are lying fallow, mm-hmm. you know, should be thinking, how do I invest a few dollars in the house and try to turn it into a rental, even if I'm not going to turn it into, you know, people who have farmland should be thinking. You know, how do I begin to kind of make this farmland a viable commercial enterprise? People, you know, it's there. And we sit and we watch it and we get caught saying, you know, it, it was X percent and it should have been Y. And we spend all day <laughs> thinking about this <laughs> and, and, and not thinking about what we can actually do with the resources that we actually have. Right. Uh, and, and I think there's and that is why I started out commending you guys for staying true to the course of educating guys <laughs> on this issue because she was I hear those arguments way too much and and I know you guys get that pushback yeah I mean I understand but I mean I I, I understand that and, and uh, but I but I've tried to say to folks is that it's important for us to have, we can have both of these conversations at the same time absolutely uh, you know you don't have to have only one conversation and it's it's one of the things that I think it's important for people to understand. We we have to have many conversations going on at the same time about lots of issues. Things don't wait in a linear fashion to happen. Right? Uh, you know, while you're thinking about one thing, the other thing doesn't stop. Yeah. And so I think we need to have we need to allow and create a space for those people who are who are entrepreneurial oriented to think about ways in which they can engage in that manner and to remove the barriers from their engagement, be that mindset barrier or others. And I think that's important for us at this juncture. I I really do. And I think the resources, financial resources generated from oil and gas and particularly oil over the next decade, I think those resources are going to provide for, if if properly um, expended, um would really provide for some critical um improvements in infrastructure mm-hmm. you know um if you go to Ghana now traffic is a problem i mean there are some new roads being built mm-hmm. but you know um Ghana needs a lot more roads um some roads need to be to be properly rebuilt. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's in the area of infrastructure, bridges and so on, farm to market roads and that that, that kind of thing. Um, healthcare. Yeah. You know, healthcare is critical. And um, you know, we still have some uh, I hate to use the word critical again, but some critical failures in our health healthcare system. Um, and you know, those need to be addressed. We need to have better facilities. Um, we have we need to have more um, medical expertise mm-hmm. um, available, um, equipment and so on. So, so I'm saying these that, are all opportunities you're saying for yeah these are opportunities. Yeah. Um, um, you know what I'm really saying here is that not only are there opportunities for people to go and invest in in in, in in, in business, in you know, but that there are certain um, things that the government, uh, whoever forms the government, mm-hmm. uh, that a government of Ghana will have to invest in mm-hmm. um, infrastructure, healthcare, um, public safety, like law enforcement, um, uh, in terms of um, remuneration to particularly critical people like police, nurses, teachers. Yeah. And so on, and I think, like again, if it's done, if we use those resources well, um, Guyana really, really um, is or will be, um, or would be, on the on the track to becoming a genuinely prosperous country. I like that. Um, you know, I think we need to see the, gla- the the situation right now as a glass that is half full. Mm-hmm. rather than half empty, you know? And I think if 
the, like, like the salesman that went to Africa and said the people not wearing shoes, the shoe salesman that went to Africa and said people not wearing shoes, and the other one went and said, ah, vast opportunity, to, the people don't have shoes, right? Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but I think if our, if our, you know, politicians can, can strike a, a, a balance in terms of how they approach each other, and not necessarily be as confrontational as they can be from time to time. Um, if this government, future government, whoever forms the government, um, is one that is um, open to, to transparency, that is committed to transparency and good governance, um, you know, I think I think that um, the future um, really can be one that mm -hmm. our Guyanese, including generations to come, absolutely, you know, um, you know would have been, uh, should be, should be, should be proud of. I love it. So, Dr. Blackman, your closing words too. No, I, 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 I agree with Wesley. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of a, I, I suppose, I'm a, I'm a glass half full kind of guy, and uh, you know what I know. So, so you know. I always bring it back to education. What I know is that Guyana is one of the places where, you know, for, you know, you know, Wesley mentioned this earlier about people who can, you know, learn how to do things really well. Well, if we have some particular geniuses that we, you know, regardless of where we find ourselves, we learn how to do things very, very well. And so I think that Guyana's human capital and workforce will only get better. Yes. And and this will be the cornerstone of us kind of advancing. And you know, it's it's in this context that I'm also also very, very I, I want to really sort of strongly encourage people of the diaspora to lend their expertise because I think this human capital is really the essential thing at the set at the heart of it. And I think once this human capital is there and it begins to really churn away, then you know, we will make the investments that that were just described in education, workforce development and training, health, transportation, reducing crime, you know, focusing on building resilient climate, building a higher sea wall, figuring out how yeah. the water wouldn't jump over and end <laughs> us all. Uh, but, you know, so I'm, so I'm very, I'm very, I'm very optimistic about the future of Ghana and I'm optimistic because I think that because I think I know the people of Guyana, right? I, I know Guyanese people. I know them all across the world, and they've 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 always seen we have always seemed to be able to adapt very effectively and to learn very quickly and to be integral parts of whatever ecosystem we find ourselves in. <laughs> And so, and so I think this is an opportunity for us to 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 kind of you know contribute to this emerging ecosystem that we have in Guyana. And I think if we do, I think if and when we do, because I really do think that people will, will, will if and when we do in, in, in ways that I think we can, I think, I think we will, you know, we will look back on it and feel very proud that we, you know, we took some of the things that we learned in New York and we took some of the things that we learned in Miami and we took some of the things that we learned in Toronto and we took them home and we, you know, we help to build up the various things that 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 will be there, you know, 30, 40 years from now. Thank you guys so much. You know, yeah. this was great. Yeah. Remind um, <laughs> folks who are listening that the event mm -hmm. is next Wednesday yep. at the Miramar Cultural Center, uh, City it's of Miramar. It's a free event. It's a free and, event. And Wesley, um, how could they find you guys online? Um, they can go to in the Chambers case, uh, our um, uh, Facebook page and uh, our website has information, of course. Okay. Um, my personal email, not email, but, uh, Facebook page, where I post a lot of stuff there. Um, and of course, they can uh, register by sending an email to Guy Amcham, G U Y A M C H A M at gmail.com. 
All right. And to um, attend, uh, folks must register, right? So we'll, we'll remind them again, and I'll drop the link in, in the, um, under the video, guyamcham at gmail.com. Right. And Dr. Blackman, how can we follow you to... Um... So you can certainly, you know, just Google Guyana Business Journal, and okay. you, you'll, you'll be taken directly to the, to the webpage, and uh, also Guyana Business Journal on Facebook. Uh, you'll be able to see all of the activities there. And uh, just to repeat that, to RSVP for the event mm -hmm. at guyamchan at gmail.com. So we'll, we've decided to have everything, not to have any confusion, mm -hmm. uh, to have everything just go to one Just go system. through go through the one yes, portal. Go, yes, yes, that makes and, much and more I, sense. I just want to thank you guys. And I want to remind everyone, if they enjoyed this conversation, follow you guys. Next step is, of course, come out and um, attend the meeting. I look forward to on seeing December fourteenth. <laughs> is it is it also going to be online for those who can't? Uh, so we, we're making some arrangements to uh, to to do some streaming, and we'll announce the the streaming details uh, okay. shortly. All right. Well, we look forward to having you guys back on and Wesley having some more guests on so we can update folks as we get closer to the event um, about the streaming possibilities and how they can follow the page. Again, thank you all so much. It was thank a you. pleasure. Um, I could have gone on for another hour. I don't know if you all can tell. I love these conversations. <laughs> and I do want to again say thank you all for Keeping on, keeping on, despite all of the, the stress and opposition and, and all that. And, 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 and one of the other opportunities, I know you, you, you're you a very cultural person. Um, one of the opportunities, the other opportunity in Guyana that, you know, lends itself to um, significant, uh, uh, significant uh, profits mm -hmm. would be the creative industries. Oh, you know, yes, that orange that. economy. Huh? The yes. orange, well, they call it the orange economy. The orange economy, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. We mm -hmm. actually went down. We took um, a band down for the cricket carnival. Yes. And um, we were pleased. And, you know, I, you can already see the development, um, yeah. the president's interest actually in, in that sector because he was sitting, he was out here at the time and he was sitting clued into the, the local performers at the time. And you could actually see the interest in developing that economy. And um, for yeah. us personally, taking that um, group back there for the Cricket Carnival, we had a great time and we're actually going back and, and making our presence felt in a bigger way um, next year. So we're we're at home. Yeah, well, come on down. Yeah. And then uh, lest I be lest I be uh, terrible, uh, please uh, give my regards to my uh, my former physics classmate. <laughs> yes, Sam, I love it. Yes. Will do. <laughs> <laughs> and right. um, so what I'll do, um, Gannette, is I line up um, one or two guests over the next couple mm -hmm. of days so that um, you can get their perspectives. We put together uh, 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 two panels of really um, interesting and, and uh, I, I don't like to refer to people as experts, but um, some quite knowledgeable um, sources um, and uh, we will make these available so that people can get a, a feel. And I think, um, not I think, I, I should let you know that um, a senior executive of uh, Exxon Mobil will be among the speakers at the at the at the event. So people will get Very a chance nice. to, to hear from from Exxon and to share any ideas they may have as, as well with the with the with the panels. Wonderful, wonderful. Again, thank you. And look forward to um, doing some more of these and, and getting folks, you know, hearing about, because it, it's just something that'll spark them, right? And um, again, thank you guys for doing the work that you do, because we know it's not easy and it's necessary. So thank you all for contributing to Guyana's growth. <laughs> thank you. Yep. And development, you know, because they say and group development, is not, yes. group is not necessarily development, right? So, <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Hey, thanks, and uh, you have a good evening. Have a wonderful evening.